In my last After Effects video, we explored how to achieve the smoothest camera movements possible. Many of you in the comments asked for a deeper dive into the camera settings and that's exactly what we're covering today. So let's get straight into After Effects. I'm gonna press right click and create a new camera. Now I'm just gonna briefly show you all of these settings we're gonna go through and later on I'm gonna show you every setting in detail. So by the end of this video you're gonna know everything about the 3D camera. First we can notice that there are two types of cameras, a one node and a two node camera. Here in the presets tab we can see the focal length. It can go all the way from 15 to 200 millimeters. Of course we could also go lower or higher than that number but then we'd have to manually set the focal length value right here. In the middle we can see that there's some more settings. We're not gonna touch those because once we adjust the focal length these values adjust accordingly. And at the end we're gonna disclose the depth of field option. So if we enable that we're gonna see more settings appear. For example like focus distance, aperture, f-stop and blur level. So we're gonna go into detail about about this later on. For now let's close this menu. I'm firstly gonna set up a 3D environment so I can give you a better demonstration of what's actually going on as we're adjusting the camera settings. First I'm gonna import all of the elements inside the project panel. I'm gonna place the sky in our timeline. I'm gonna make sure it's a 3D layer. Just a quick reminder, if you're working with a camera, your elements need to be 3D in order for the camera to work. Otherwise you're not gonna see anything happening. Now let's drag these two buildings in, make them 3D, scale them down a bit and reposition them. And and now for me to be able to show you the camera settings in the most efficient way, we're gonna have to create depth inside our scene. And I'm gonna do that by adjusting the Z values of each element. For example, I'm gonna position this building a lot closer to our screen. And now I'm gonna scale it down. And I'm gonna make sure this one is a lot further from this one. Now I've simply added more of these clouds in this green valley behind everything. I have also played with their Z values to create depth. And now we can finally focus on adding the camera and explaining all of its settings. So let's press right click, new camera. As I mentioned before, we have a one node and a two node camera. So first I'm gonna work with a one node camera and right after that, I'm gonna show you a two node camera so you can see the exact difference between these two. So let's click okay, select the camera, hit on this arrow right here. And now we're gonna be able to see all of its properties. To give you a better insight of what's actually going on, I'm gonna switch to two views. Here we can see what our camera sees and here we can see what our scene looks like from a different angle. So if we wanted to change the camera's position, we could simply change these position values and we can clearly see that our camera is moving as we're changing them. So if I wanted to zoom in or zoom out, I simply have to change the Z value. But if we for a second turn the camera off and we add another camera, which is a two node camera, here on the right side, we're gonna see this little difference, which is this little point right here. If we open in settings and open transform, we're gonna see one extra value that is added with the two node camera. And that is the point of interest which is exactly this point right here. Now remember when we played with the position settings of the one node camera, as we would move these settings, the camera would just follow along. Now the difference with a two node camera is that when we decide to move these position settings, the camera is gonna rotate around the point of interest. So the only actual difference between a one node and a two node camera is that a regular one node camera moves left, right, up or down, while a two node camera rotates around the point of interest. And that is basically the only difference between these two. The rest of the settings that we're gonna go through are the same for both of these camera types. So in short terms, a regular one note camera is good if we're gonna be creating some simple movements and a two note camera could be a way to go if you wanna make some circular movements or if you wanna specifically target one object and pivot around that object specifically. From now on, I'm simply gonna be working with a one note camera because all the rest of the settings are the same compared to the other one. So if we click on this camera settings button, the camera settings are gonna pop out again. So let me explain each one and demonstrate it for you. For a much better and clearer explanation, I'm gonna switch from custom view to top view. First, I'd like to talk about this preset tab, which is effectively the focal length of our camera. Now, if you pay close attention to this camera sketch, you're gonna notice that if we increase the focal length, the view of the camera gets much narrower, as you can see in this main frame right here. And the other way around, if we decided to make the focal length a lot smaller, we can see that our camera view gets a lot wider, as we can clearly see in our active camera view. So in other words, the focal length is basically how wide or narrow your camera angle is gonna be. But in most cases for all of you, while using After Effects 99.9% .9 of the time, you're simply gonna choose one preset of about 50 or 35 millimeters at the beginning, and you're most likely not gonna be changing it throughout the whole animation. I simply wanted to show you behind the scenes
scenes what all of these settings actually do. Now let's get to film size. In photography, a film is a digital sensor placed inside the camera that determines the field of view or basically how much of the scene the camera captures. The larger this sensor is, it produces a higher quality image because it captures more light and more detail. So if we decided to increase this film size, we would see the same effect happening to our camera as we did when we changed the focal length. But the only difference is that as the film size is getting larger, the angle of the camera gets wider. Whereas in focal length, when we would make it bigger, the camera angle would be narrower, which means these two options are not proportional. And also if we make the film size smaller, we can see the camera angle gets narrower. And now a lot of you might say that film size and focal length are basically the same thing. Well, inside a program, they basically basically seem like they're the same and they both actually play with the camera's field of view but technically they're not the same because the film size is actually a little sensor while the focal length depends on the lens that we use on our camera. But inside After Effects we don't have to deal with real cameras so I would advise you not to touch this film size at all. I'm not gonna get into zoom and angle of view settings and I don't think you should touch them at all because once you adjust the focal length or the film size settings these settings change accordingly so there's no need to touch them at all. And now I would like to talk about the depth of field options. I positioned these settings a bit to the left so we can focus more on the screen and therefore be able to see the key differences once we start playing around with these settings. So let's enable depth of field option. Once that is checked, we're gonna have a lot of these extra options available. So let me explain each one. First, I'd like to talk about the aperture and the f-stop values. These two settings are inversely proportional, which means if the value of one of them goes up, the value on the other one goes down and vice versa. So let's for example set the f-stop value to about 1.5. We're gonna immediately notice the difference. We're gonna clearly see that the building right in front of us is in focus while the rest of the elements in the background are blurry. But since this building is in our focus right now, what if we wanted to make the background a bit more focused while this building remains blurry? In that case, we're gonna use this focus distance option. We're gonna notice that once we start playing around with its values, the blurriness or rather the depth of field changes. So as we have increased the focus distance, everything at this distance is gonna be in focus while everything else is gonna be blurry. So it really depends on what you wanna be focused on in your scene. I'd like to switch it back to how it was before so that the building that's right in front of us is in focus while the background remains blurry. Okay, so now that we've set up this building to be in focus, let's get back to the aperture and the f-stop values. Now, if we wanted to make the background even blurrier, we would decrease the f-stop or increase the aperture value. As I'm increasing the aperture value, you can clearly see how the background becomes even blurrier. And if I were to put it at zero, you wouldn't see the difference at all. There would basically be no depth of field and not a single element would be in focus, but the whole scene would actually look the same. Now we've got a situation that's pretty similar to the one we had with the focal length and the film size, but you can think of an aperture as a physical opening in a camera lens that lets the light pass through to the camera sensor, while the f-stop is basically a numerical value that represents the size of the aperture relative to the focal length of the lens. So to lower the f-stop value, value is, the wider the aperture, which lets in more light and creates a shallower depth of field. Whereas the higher the f-stop value is, the narrower the aperture becomes, which means it lets in less light and creates a deeper depth of field. So for example, if we were to put the aperture to about 43 millimeters, that means the f-stop lowers to 1.2. And now since we've separated the foreground and the background elements, we can now adjust the blur level, which I think is pretty self-explanatory. So in short terms, you can think of aperture as a small hole and f-stop as the measurement of how big or small the hole is. To wrap things up, I created a simple zoom out animation that highlights the camera setting tweaks we discussed today. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.